Hello everyone and welcome to our video on the section of vertical projectile motion. All right, this is for grade 12. All right, vertical projectile motion is a very uh, small section in the matric syllabus and it basically is a, an extension of grade 10's equations of motion. All right, so let's just recap quickly. I uh, would like you to recall the equations of motion from grade 10. And in the follow-on videos, I will be using equations of motion. All right, those four equations of motion that we all know so well. All right, those equations of motions, just to remind you, determine displacement, initial and final velocity, acceleration, as well as change in times, which is delta t. Now, the only thing different from equations of motions in grade 10 and vertical projectile motion is that one variable changes, and that is the x variable. x is not changed to y with delta x. Delta x now becomes delta y. Reason being is that x is horizontal and y is vertical. So we cannot say we are calculating delta x for a vertical projectile motion, all right? Y, when we talk about the y variable, we can equate that to height, the height of a building. A ball drops from the height of a building. We cannot say it is dropping from a horizontal uh, surface, right? It's dropping onto a horizontal surface, but it is free falling at a vertical distance. Hence, it has to be delta y that we will be need to calculate. So x changes to y. That is the only thing different in the equations of motion for vertical projectile motion. That is the only thing different. I will continue to demonstrate this in a follow-on question. Now let's have a look at the graphs. All right. Now the graphs are basically the same as for vertical as for the equations of motion here. They are the exact same for vertical projectile motion, commonly known as VPM, as I've stated it there. Let's have a look at each of the graphs for a stationary object. All right, the acceleration uh, time graph will be zero. So would the velocity time graph also be zero. And the displacement would be constant, a constant line. All right, a straight line, constant. All right, that is the distance that it would have been from another object or from another point. All right, for a uniform object, the displacement time graph is a steady increasing straight line curve. For the velocity time graph, it is constant because it's moving uniformly at no acceleration, hence, the acceleration time graph is zero. For a constant acceleration, the displacement time graph is a curve going upwards quite steeply, all right, showing that as time increases, so does the displacement. Then velocity is a steady increasing curve, all right, also showing as time increases, the velocity also increases. And acceleration is a uniform constant a straight line above zero as well, showing that the object is act, is in fact accelerating. Okay, so basically the same graphs as for equations of motion, the same types of curves, same shapes more or less. All right, so let's just recall for the graphs that for the displacement versus time graph, the slope of the graph equals the velocity of the object. We can calculate the velocity of an object by just calculating the gradient of the displacement time graph curve. For the velocity versus time graph, the area underneath the graph determines the displacement of the object. All right. And for the acceleration versus time graph, the area underneath this graph determines the velocity of the object. All right. So very straightforward, very easy. All right. And this, uh, this section can become tricky only if you misread your questions. All right, so I'm going to teach you now to how to read your questions carefully so you are able to get the question right and also answer it the most effectively.
effectively.